Hey y'all, welcome back to the RV renovation series. This is day three. Um, I know I told y'all on the last episode that I was going to finish the priming yesterday, but that did not end up happening because I had a lot of tomatoes in my garden that I had to process. So I made like 18 pints of salsa yesterday and it took me like all day. So today I'm starting off by finishing the priming in this camper. Really wasn't a whole lot left to do. Um, and it's kind of spotty to be honest with you because there's certain places that I didn't need primer, which is actually pretty helpful. So you notice I didn't put any primer on that wall to the right and that's because I'm gonna build an entertainment center there, which I'm going to start framing out today. Um, and then I also didn't uh, put a bunch of primer in the shower area because I'm gonna put shower panels there anyway. Um, and then in the kitchen area, I didn't do it where I'm going to put the backsplash because I want that to be, um, basically as clean as it can be for the muscle bound, muscle bound, muscle bound, I don't know, mat that I use to do the tiles. Now I don't want to get paint all over these, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off. That way I can paint behind them. Um, this is the sensors for the tanks and then there's the hot water heater switch and a light switch. Um, now important note for this, so this is actually in this little raised box because there's not enough thickness in the wall for this outlet to go in safely. So definitely save any boxes that you see like this, they need to go back in just like that. Um, and you notice I just clipped the wires because I'm not going to be reusing these outlets. I don't reuse any of these outlets. Um, especially GFCI ones on campers this old. It's always safe to just get new ones, spend the extra 15, 20 bucks and have peace of mind. And last but not least, I'm gonna hand paint around the fridge. Um, and I already took those panels off as you can see. So I'll paint those in my shop. And that pretty much concludes the priming part of this. So I stopped and I took a break and drank my favorite soda. These are called poppies. They're delicious and they're literally my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out what I want this entertainment center to look like. And this is just basically a rough idea of where I want things to go first. Um, that's just because that is how my brain works. So nothing fancy as you can see, just where the panel is, the fireplace, the TV. Um, and I have a radio that I'm gonna put in there as well. So I'm gonna start by ripping down some wood. Um, I want some one and a half inch panels and then I realized that my saw blade was dull. So I changed my saw blade and um, yeah, I just, I don't like cutting with a really dull blade, especially pieces like this and I'm, where I'm gonna have to cut a lot. It kicks back on me too much and I just, I don't like it. And I already had a new one and it was time anyway. So now that we have a new blade and I cleaned out the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting and it cuts like butter. So again, this is basically one and a half by one and a half is what this is gonna come down to. Um, you could do one inch by one and a half, but I just, I like a thicker frame for these entertainment centers just because they do have TVs in them and they do hold the fireplace. Um, and it just makes me feel better about it being built well and that it will never come apart, ever. So I started out with my two side pieces here and then I cut a bunch of pieces for the middle. Um, I did actually draw this out and roughly measure where I wanted everything to go. Um, so that way I know exactly where all of my support pieces need to be. And I would highly suggest having a plane in place before you start cutting because you don't want to waste a bunch of wood. I've been there, done that. Next, I'm gonna lay out all of these pieces on the floor just to get a good visual to make sure that the picture that I drew kind of lines up with what I have in my head. And as you can see, I cut one piece too many, which is why I always double check. Just go back and make sure that this is actually the design that you want. So next I'm unboxing this fireplace and I do that because I want the exact dimensions of the fireplace. So I know exactly how big I need to make the hole for the fireplace to go in. Now you can ask me, why do you do that? Well, because I didn't measure one time and I went with the measurements that the manufacturer said how big the hole was supposed to be and it was not right. So I said, never ever again will I do that. So right there, I basically put my two side pieces together and I used my square to mark out where these pieces in the middle needed to go. Um, and I did that so it's the exact same on each side. And then I start with my top and my bottom piece. Um, I make sure it's square and then I drill a pilot hole and then put screws in it, put two screws on each side just to be safe. Um, so nothing really too complicated here. The main focus is making sure each of these pieces is square before you screw it in because once you start, if that main piece isn't square, you'll get to a point where the entire thing is not square and you don't want that. 
Now, I think this entire thing is like 30 something and the opening for the fireplace, um, I needed to take two and a half inches off of each side to be able to perfectly fit in the fireplace without having wiggle room. So I put these two supports on the side. That way I have plenty of space to screw in the fireplace and it'll be on framing on all sides when I screw it in. Um, last piece up there, I'm going to put a uh, radio in the right hand corner. And so I just put a little support in the corner. So now that that's all framed out, I have to figure out how to support this back part right here. So I am measuring from the bottom of the floor up to basically the point where my first shelf is going to be for the TV. And I'm making that mark on the wall. That way, when I put the front face, uh, the front support on, um, it'll actually be level with the one in the back, if that makes sense at all. Now, because the new TV is going to sit a little bit higher than it previously did in this camper, I need to move all of these up about, I don't know, six or eight inches. Um, so that's what you see me doing right here. I'm going to take all of them out. I needed a little bit of extra slack there for that outlet. So I went down to um, the box and I basically just fed a little bit more up into the wall. Um, and right here, I just made a straight line that connected the measurements that I had made before I took all that stuff out. Um, so I can make sure that my line is exactly where it needs to be when I go to put this framing in. Now this is also gonna have to come off and I'm just gonna loosen it from the wall here um, and then I'll actually pull it out later once I get to this top piece. All right, now stay with me here. So in order to move my outlets up, I got my framing square and I put it on uh, the side right there where the door is, assuming that that is square, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then I made a line and over here you see, I'm basically putting the top of my square on that line that I made and tracing right where the outlets are to begin with. Um, so I'm using the corner of those uh, outlets right there just to kind of make myself a little box. And now I'm measuring to make sure that they're basically the same size. Um, so I can just cut these out right here and notice I have my finger behind the wall um, because what you don't want to do is slice into any wires that are behind the wall. So I like to keep my finger there and press the wires back. Uh, just to be on the safe side and then I can feed these wires back up into the wall um, and move them up. I mean, it's it's really that easy. People get so like bent out of shape about electrical, but it's really easy to move these things in and out the walls if they're really close like this. Now, because I don't have a whole lot of slack in this outlet, I'm actually going to uh, take the wires out. Normally I just clip them, but I want the extra space just in case. So there's little tabs on the side, you press it with a screwdriver and then you get a thick screwdriver and just pry the wires out. Obviously make sure your power is off first. Now, next I'm gonna start on the back piece that's gonna support everything from the back side. I am basically making a template of what I made um, on the left side there, but I don't need the bottom half of it because I'm not supporting the fireplace or the electrical uh, from the back. So I really need the only the TV support and the little cubby uh, from the back side so I can build out a little box on the inside. So same thing with this side, just make sure everything is square when you screw it in. Um, I drilled pilot holes and then put two screws on each side. Nothing crazy about it. I need to move this thermostat. So what I am going to do is take all these wires out. There's a bunch of little tiny wires that go to different things, the fan, uh, the furnace, a whole bunch of different things. So just screw them out. And then this actually feeds up into the ceiling and the wire is already exposed. So I just pulled this wire up from the ceiling and out of the wall. That way I can move it to a different spot. Cause I obviously don't want the, um, thermostat hiding behind the TV because that would be really inconvenient. You can't really tell what I'm doing here, but basically I need to move all of these wires that are in the ceiling. That way I can fit this framing behind it. So I do end up cutting two 12 volt wires that go on, um, they actually go to the water heater and a switch on the back side of that wall. So I'll end up soldering those. It's okay to do that as long as you'll be able to access it. Um, you don't ever want to do it if you can't access it, but I can. So I'm going to do that instead of feeding it all back through the wall. 
Um, and then after that, I got that piece screwed up into the studs of the wall, which I had previously marked. And then I set this bad boy in place and screwed it to the floor. And tomorrow I'll go ahead and finish um, the side framing and kind of pull it all together and then finish screwing the entire thing to the wall. So join me tomorrow if you want to see how the rest of this is built.